So today we are on our way to Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company here in Mansfield, Missouri. We're going to get a tour. We're going to select some seeds for you. There's going to be a giveaway coming up. We're going to tour the place as much as we can and learn all there is to learn about heirloom seeds. So come along with us. Let's go. on Baker Creek Road for half a mile. We've come on a busy, busy day. What's up with you? <laughs> so we're here today at Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. We're here with Kathy McFarland with Media Services. And Kathy, so thank you so much. I know you're going to spend quite a bit of time with us today. Take us around. Show us what we've got in the seed store and some of the great things to see here at Baker Creek. So what can you show us? Let's go, shall we? We, we are going to. It's a perfect day to be here. We we're, we're have a great festival. The weather's perfect. Let's go look and see what we have at the seed store, the festival, everything there is, the gardens. I'm the... excited. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to give you a little brief history of Baker Creek. Um, my history with Baker Creek is that I have been here for almost 14 years, thought I was going to work two months, so I'm one of the longest lived employees here that, that's been here. Um, so I've worked with Terry Gettle for a long time, and he started the company when he was 17 years old. He grew his first seeds when he was three years old, and he was always interested in growing things. And his family moved here from the Idaho Valley when he was 12. They moved here for a better growing season, longer growing season, better growing climate. And he was saving seeds, continued to save seeds. Wasn't sure what he was gonna do with them. Uh, started selling them as swap meats and that type of thing. And then when he was 17, he actually put out his first seed catalog. And that was in 1997. And now we print more than a million catalogs every year. So uh, he started out in the house right there. This is where his family moved there when he was 12. This is originally a land-grant homestead. And if you know from history, land-grant homesteads, um, they were given to, a certain amount of land was given to the homesteaders. They did not have to pay any money for it, but they had to live on it for a certain amount of time. This was a land-grant homestead for the Rippey family, and the Rippies continued living here until the Gettles moved here. And so that's where the business started with uh, Jared and his friend Andrew packing seeds in the bedroom, sitting on the stairs. And then um, he was, was selling seeds by this time, and there was a girl from mid-Missouri, her name was Emily, and she was also a homeschooled kid, but she was an aspiring writer and she heard about this rogue seed grower down in Southern Missouri. So she came down to do an interview of him and she is now his wife. <laughs> they have two biological daughters, two adopted children and are now expecting another child. Oh, how wonderful. So, uh, so it's worked out really well. They live right here on the property and uh, the whole family is involved in the seed business. Uh, even the little girls know all about packing seeds and so forth. So. Uh, that's a very brief history of the company, and we've got lots to look at if you want to go look around. So what we have here, uh, let me give you a little bit of history of the tile garden first of all. Okay. Uh, the tile garden came about in uh, 2012 
Uh, Jared and Emily took a trip to Italy to the world's largest food conference. And while he was there, he fell in love with the Italian courtyards. So Jared Gettle did what Jared Gettle does. He came back and built his courtyard. Until this point, it was an ugly little hillside with some goats and a castor bean. And, castor beans. <laughs> and so there are actually 92 growing beds here. And I beg you to come back in April when this will all be tulips. Oh. The whole thing will be tulips in April. Um, and it looks right like you've got a lot of basil going on right now. We've got a lot of basil. And if you go down there, there's a lot of the coxcomb flowers. Uh, and the gofrina over there, if you look over there, look at all the different types of gofrina, just all different colors. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, he built us this courtyard, which we call the tile garden. This is our main display garden now. This is what everybody comes to see. It's right here at the top of our village. Uh, the squash tower is a replica, a miniature replica of the squash tower that we used to do in Santa Rosa, California for the National Heirloom Expo. Oh, wow. Uh, he did his first National Heirloom Expo there in 2010, and we were gearing up for the 10th anniversary one when the pandemic hit, and we have not had one there since, but we now are planning one for this year. Uh, but anyway, we used to do a huge squash tower there, and we did this miniature one here, and all of these squash were grown on a farm at Norwood, just like 10 miles down the road, by one of our employees and her husband, who grew 85 different varieties of squash on their farm. Wow. In this horrible drought year. Yeah. <laughs> um, the festival started in the year 2000, when Jared Gettle decided that it would be, he loves people and he likes to talk about gardening, and he thought it would be fun to have a few people come and talk about gardening. And so he invited people over to meet on his front yard and talk about gardening. And that's what they did. And he wasn't sure, you know, he thought, well, 50 people come, we're good. And he had 450 people come. So that was the beginning of our festivals. And we have had some type of festivals for the last several years. We have had um, festivals every month, March through October. We are changing that for next year. We will have only three festivals, April, May, and October, and they will all be two-day festivals. Our tulip festival in April, our spring planting festival in May, and then a harvest festival in October. Awesome. But they will all be two-day festivals. So those are all your 2023 festival dates, so we'll have them for our viewers so that they can plan a visit to visit out here with you. That is true. And for your viewers in California or who would like to travel to California, we are planning our National Heirloom Expo again for 2023. It will no longer be in Santa Rosa. It will be in Ventura, California okay. this year. And that is in September. And I do not have those dates on top of my mind, but it will be in our catalog. And we'll put it in the description box below. Great. We'll get all that information okay. for the viewers so okay. they can do that as well. Okay. So after Jared started having the festivals, that's when he got the idea to build up the little village. And so all of the buildings that may look really old are actually within the last 20 years. Um, and it's, uh, that is now a restaurant, a vegan restaurant that is in operation today. Uh, but all of the buildings have, have been added. When he moved to the property, my understanding is the only buildings on the property were the house and one little barn down the hill. So all of these other buildings have been added. People so frequently will come by and you know with seeds. I found these. My grandpa died. I found these in a store. You know, do you want to plant them? And he never says no. You know, he always wants to plant them and see what he's grown out and and so forth. Just had a gentleman a little bit ago who came up to me and he said, "They told me you're the person to ask." if I can get one of the pups off of the banana tree. Oh. And I said, I'm actually not the person to ask, but I can find out for you. <laughs> so I went to Jared Gettle and introduced him. And he said, he said, sure. And the guy said, how much you want for it? Jared said, just take one. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. It's a, you know, he loves sharing. He loves, you know, um, he, he highly encourages people to, um, to save seeds. And people say, but aren't you hurting your business like that? And you know, Jer would be happy to go out of business if it was because everybody was saving their own seeds. Right, if we all you became self-sufficient. In my other life, before I came to work at Baker Creek, I was actually an English teacher. I taught, so I retired after 30 years in an English classroom and I teach in high school. And so I give a lot of school tours. 
And I used to tell my kids, you know, write what you know about, write what you're interested in. And now what I like to tell them is the reason Jared Gettle is so successful is because he didn't start out to amass wealth. He was interested in saving seed diversity, and he wanted to make enough money to continue uh, looking for seeds. And in the old days, that meant getting get in his old jalopy car and sleep in it. Right. <laughs> Now he can afford to send entire teams all over the world. All over the to world. Seats. And but that's what he's interested in, and that what he what, what he puts his money into. So we have this facility here, and then uh, two years ago they moved into the warehouse in Seymour, and then the pandemic hit, and seed business went crazy. And so we had just started in the warehouse, and he knew immediately it's going to be too small, so we double the size of that warehouse. So now, uh, all of the, the, the retail uh, part is here. This is the only place where they can go to buy seeds. Uh, but uh, all the packing, shipping, and everything is done in our nice new fancy warehouse in Seymour now. Oh, okay. And as you came up, you probably saw all the greenhouses mm -hmm. down there. Uh huh. The yes. Those are just totally amazing. And it's funny, while we're speaking today, Kathy, people are walking through this beautiful tile garden and they're brushing up against the basil and you can smell it. The fragrance is lovely. And I wish that our viewers could smell it because it is so wonderful. And the bees, the pollinators are having a wonderful time today as well. But everybody's really enjoying that. What else would you like to know? Let's, I want to pick out some seeds. I'd like to go to the favorite. seed store then. I'd love to go to the seed, the seed store. store. A half hour ago, it was like elbow to elbow people. So let's go see what it looks like now. Okay. How many seats do we have on this main wall that are available for your visitors? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> right now we offer about a thousand varieties of seeds. There have been some years earlier when I was working here we were offering close to 2,000 varieties. But we have cut back on some of those. I do not know how many of those uh, we have here now. Um, I can tell you, and I, I can't even tell you uh, because it changes year to year what are our five top best sellers. But I do know that uh, one of our best sellers is Rocky Top Lettuce, the salad mix. It's my favorite lettuce. I plant it twice a year, every year. Uh, so we have that. The Boston Pickling Cucumber is very popular. Um, let's see. Uh, the tomato varieties would change from year to year. Some of the peppers. If I were to ask you, yes, right off the cuff, for you to pick out your top five that you love, that if your best friend showed up and said, send me home with your best five, let's pick those out and we're gonna do a giveaway on the channel. And that way one of our viewers can receive those top five picks. We'll have a drawing and we'll send those out. We'll say they're Kathy's top five. Well, I know one thing that I wanna get while I'm here. And is like the Kajari Melons. Over here. Here we go, Kajari Melons. Lovely. Look at those. Do we have two? Yes. I'm going to get one for me and one for a giveaway on my channel. That's great. Um, I actually tasted those for the first time this year. I happened to be here when they were harvesting, and Jer said, have one of these melons. And it's the first thing. It was absolutely delicious. I just think they're beautiful. So they are beautiful. Also tastes really good. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, that Something was one that, of my main That's things. interesting while we're here are the tra dragon tongues. I was going to ask about the dragon tongue. I yes. planted these for the first time this year, and I planted them only because my six year old grandson from Colorado was coming to visit this summer, and I wanted him to have dragon tongue beans. They're a beautiful bean, so, and I hear that they can up nicely, just like a regular green bean. I, I have not tried canning them, but I think that's probably right. And they cook up, and they, they keep their color when they're cooked. That's a good okay. thing. Okay. Well, let's take one of those so, for viewers, and do you have another for me? Or was that the last that one? Was the last one, but I can Maybe another one. I don't, I don't know. No, that okay. Was the seeds are really sold today. Sure, it's a busy, busy day. All right. What's your number two pick? 
Okay, I wanted to, because I qualified this by saying that I don't go for the exotic. But a few years ago, I planted the golden beets for the first time. They are now a staple in my garden. I plant two types of beets. I plant the um, Detroit dark red, which is probably the most common beet there is. And I, I plant that, but these are wonderful. I plant these every year now, too. Okay, so well, these are going to go in our drawing for our listeners. Do you want two packs of those? No. Okay. One for them. Okay. I've got I've got so many beets in my okay. pantry. I don't know that I'll ever finish them. You know, one lettuce variety that I wanted to pick up for myself was the ones that you're promoting on Facebook right now. They're just almost like little iceberg lettuces. Mm -hmm. Where are those at? I forget what they're called. They had a very unique little name. Tom thumbs. Oh, the tom is it the, is it the tom right. thumb lettuce? I definitely wanted to get those. I want to try them in my hydroponics garden. Doing uh, the cracky method. They probably should do very well. That's awesome. Cracky. Yes. Love cracky method. I'm going to try these in our cracky garden. Okay. Great. So those are for me. What, what was the name of it again, Kathy? Rocky Top. Rocky, Rocky Top. Top Salad Blend. Rocky Top Salad Blend. Everybody break out in song. Rocky yeah. Top, you'll always be home, sweet home to me. Good old. Rocky I'm looking for the salad blends, and I'm not seeing. There's some salad blends right there. And there's more down here. Right We're down looking here. for Rocky Top. Yeah. Rocky Top. And Andrew told me we would probably be out of the Rocky Top. So we have this gentleman's looking for hops. We, have hops I, we do not have hops. No, no, no hops. But we have skips and jumps. <laughs> there we go. So we stuck out on the rocky top. This is the problem with coming today. I mean, you see the Oh, crowds sure, here. sure. Um, well, why so don't we pick up some Tom Thumb for, we'll pick up one more thing of Tom Thumb while we're over there. Okay. But while we're over here, you had mentioned earlier, and I don't know if we're in the right spot or not, you'd mentioned your favorite type of cucumber. Yes. Let's go back to the cucumbers. Okay. I want to talk about these three types of cucumbers. Uh, first of all, this is this is probably one of our most uh, our best-selling cucumbers, the Boston pickling cucumber. Okay. Okay. I don't make pickles anymore, so I don't plant this. This is my favorite cucumber right now, the market work, because it, 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 it's a nice, long, straight slicing cucumber. Very good. <laughs> This is another one of those exotic things that I decided to plant one year, that I plant now, the lemon cucumber, and I liked it so well that that's what I give to my friends to try. Well, there because we go. It looks, it doesn't taste, it, it looks like a lemon, but it's, it stays very crisp, it's just a little round cucumber. That it's, it's very good. So and I do like you, that. how do you like to eat those those lemon cucumbers? What's your best way to prepare those? My favorite way to eat any cucumber is to just slice it and eat it, or chop it into a salad. Very nice. My husband likes it into a vinegar water sugar mixture. So we always have two types of cucumbers on the table. And during cucumber season, we have cucumbers on the table twice a year, twice a day. Twice a day, because twice there's so many. They grow overnight, don't they? They, they grow, grow so fast. They, they grow so fast. Okay. So how many of these do you want? Do you want one or two of each? Uh, let's do. Let's do one more lemon cube. Okay. And one more Boston, if we've got it. Okay. I see it. It's just to this lady's left. Boston. There we go. Uh, so Woo! Look the at that. One of okay. And I think if we can get a good Amish paste. Tomato. Amish paste tomato. Let's go over here. I think then we'll have a good drawing. I'm on this side of you. <laughs> okay. This is an interesting tomato. I planted it for the first time this year on the advice of John, who runs our seed store here. Okay. And it is an excellent paste tomato. It's a peat paste tomato rather than a red, mm -hmm. but it's it's very meaty. It's great for making sauce. Okay. So, well, you know what? Let's just go outside the norm and grab two of those then, since we can't seem to see where any Amish paste are. And they don't... Oh, I can find Amish just, paste. Oh, I like that hat.
Derby. These guys have been around. I Those two have been with us to California to play at the Heirloom Expo. So they're part of our regular music here. It's we wonderful. Dare likes music, so we have music at every festival. I love it. Uh, so be sure to go into the restaurant. Well, let's go to the restaurant. Okay. That sounds like a good deal. Thank you, gentlemen. vegan restaurant here at this wonderful seed location and where everything is grown and what inspired having a vegan restaurant for your visitors? That is the owner. Jared. Yep, Jared. That was my son, his idea. And we just opened uh, in July. So what we get for, from the farm is what they have extra of and we make use of it. So next year they're going to plan on planting the stuff that we use. And uh, the yeah. It's always been vegan. Yep. Jared is a vegan. Um, and so the restaurant has always operated as a vegan restaurant. So we came really in neat. knowing that we were going to be creating dishes under a vegan uh, umbrella. And, and you have pretty good, obviously you're sold out of many things today, so it's, it's, it's been received really well because, especially here in the Midwest, when you say you're vegan, <laughs> You might as well be an alien from another planet yeah, half the time. Word, for sure. It is. Yeah. Why right, I get that a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's it, we love it when people come in and they're surprised it's vegan. They didn't know it was vegan, and they're like, you know what? I have never like knowingly sat down and ate a vegan meal. Which we, I'm sure everyone's had a salad, but they yeah. think, oh, I've never eaten a vegan meal before. Okay, I'm gonna be open-minded. I'm gonna give it a try, and they'll say that was so good. And they, Believe it. I think it's such an important concept yeah, for people to start embracing totally. and realizing that there are all these alternative ways to dine. Yeah. And I know that since I gave up meat, I really enjoy the taste of the vegetables so much more. It's almost like it's cleansed my palate, yeah. and I really enjoy the veggies so yeah. much more. Right. So. Yeah, and especially when you have fresh veggies. Yes. Yeah. So many varieties. Those flavors, so yeah. Much. Yeah. yeah, I know with our tomatoes. Such a huge difference than yeah. getting something at the store when you grow them yourself. So I think it's really great you guys are getting them as much as you can, farm to table. Yeah. Really great. So I'm hoping we'll get to stop by back tomorrow. No promises, but I'd love to because we really want to try it. We'll have our full menu tomorrow. Today we had two dishes because of the festival day, um, but we'll have our full, you know, full four dishes uh, tomorrow. But and so today it looks like you offered Chinese dumplings. We did stir fry. And then we also did pesto. So stir fry was done by Chef Tong. He has a restaurant in Springfield. Called mm -hmm. Tong's. Called Tong's. And then the, all the money goes to Tong's or Thai's Thai, little ones. Thailand's little ones. Yeah. So all the money in the proceeds go great. to his, his uh, organization. It's so really good. you're not only feeding your customers, yeah. you're, you're feeding the hearts and souls and bellies of others across the world. And so it's, it's a really great project. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. that is really great. Yeah. It is. Sure. I see him in his hat. Yeah. That was an assumption. That was wrong. So cake and ice cream. Yeah, so that rotates. We can't keep it. So are we doing um, almond milk-based ice cream? Oats. So oats. 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 We're Wonderful. We're coconut. Hey, Tom. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good, good. I heard great things about you, and oh, I've heard great you. things about your charity. Yeah. Where all your proceeds go to a charity for Thailand. Yeah, so now I'm a Queen County charity. You're a sheriff? Oh no, I promise I didn't do it. We wanted to meet you. We've, we've heard great yeah, things yeah, yeah, about everything yeah. that you're so doing. So you, you do for nonprofit for Thailand with your proceeds from the right, restaurant right. here. Yeah. That's wonderful. What started that? Oh, uh, I went on a mission trip with uh, ANG back in 19, uh, 2015. Yeah. And when I came back, I wanted to do more than just, you know, helping kids. Mm -hmm. so, so I start my own deal, but my goal is to teach them how to grow stuff, you know, and, and work garden with them so they can eat healthy food. 
You know what they say? They say if you if you if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if right, you teach right. a man to fish, he'll yeah. eat for a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to teach the gardening and the cooking so they can be self sufficient right. and feed themselves. Yes. That's wonderful. And then uh, hook up with Jared. I met him uh, when he was twenty, early twenty, before he got married. Uh huh. So I told him what I'm doing. He said, well, you want to come out and cook for my uh, festival? So I came, uh, and it, it, every year he asked me to come back and donate. Help a lot. Well, I'm sorry we yeah. missed your cuisine today. We oh. were late coming in here. We were yeah, spending yeah, time yeah. with Kathy, and right, once right, I start talking, yeah. you can't you can't shut me down once right, I start right. talking. So yeah. we were late for lunch. We're going to try to come back tomorrow, but I don't think you'll be here tomorrow. No. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, yeah. well. Well, let me turn around real quick and get a picture here. Do you mind if I yeah, get a picture yeah, here with yeah, you? Yeah. My hat, my hat's not as nice as Tong's, but we're going to put some information in the description box below for Tong's yeah, restaurant right. and his charity. And if you can help out with that, that would be great. Helping kids in Thailand, right? Yes. All right, yeah, right Tong. Yeah. Thank you very much. I like yeah. your hat. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank well, you. my nickname is Tong with Twitter. Tong. Tong Wei Twitty. Yeah, hello, Tong darling. Wei Twitty. Tong Wei Hello, yeah, darling. That's my nickname, yes. Yeah. Sing it right Good. there. Hello, Sing darling. It. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. <laughs> no, I just have a club called Tong Wei Twitty. I love it. I love it. I yeah, love it. I got Get you out of the kitchen. On the wall, yeah. You do? Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll have to stop by. The Ron Star, Toy Axton, Toy Dog Knight. Those you know, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Oh, yeah. Well, I know <laughs> he Danny. was a good friend of mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know who wrote that song? Hoy Axman. Did he? For Three Dog Night. Yeah. Three Dog Night. Right. Okay, thank you, well, Tong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 217 pounds. Okay. Man. That is a big gourd. You guys make that gourd look good. I recognize these faces. Thank you, guys. You guys having fun today? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. And Kathy has been just going on and on about your beautiful tower of gourds and pumpkins and squash. So she wanted to know if we wanted to meet you and get a little bit of rundown about what it is you do. Well, uh, we just, uh, we're pumpkin growers and uh, we grew a crop last year and the owner of Baker Creek here was like, hey, do you want to do a trial garden for us? And uh, so he gave us 85 varieties that he wanted to have tested and trialed. So we expanded our field and planted them all up and this is the result. It's beautiful, and how, uh, you said 85 different 85 varieties. Different varieties. That's a lot. I saw you up there earlier taking one right off the top. Yeah, we had to take I think the topper we, down. Yeah, we got you in the background taking those off. So you can find pictures and videos of the full uh, tower intact on our Facebook page, The James Farm. It's James, J-A-N-E-S. That's wonderful. We'll make sure that everybody checks out Jane's Farm. Yeah. That is great. Well, thank you so much well, for spending time. Question. Oh, quick question. Um, what's the, the biggest gourd? Those big gourds were actually growing here on the farm okay. uh, by Baker Creek staff. Okay. And, uh, that is, uh, they grew that to save the seed. Okay. And I think they're going to make that available. I'm not sure. It depends on how the seed works. Now, do you know which one is the biggest one? I just walked by one. I'm going to go back and get some footage of it. 161 pounds. There's a one over there that's 170 something, and I heard there was one somewhere that was 200. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. And and what t what type of gourd or melon or that's pumpkin a bushel or squash? Basket gourd. Bush, bushel, basket bushel basket gourd, and and do you know what its purpose is? Is it edible? Is it? Do you make big giant birdhouses out of it? Birdhouses or big baskets. You can cut the top off and hollow it yeah. out and make a basket out of it. So oh, like that would be neat. All the gourds were bred for specific purposes. Some of them to carry water. Some of them to store grains and rice. So, like, yeah, it was it was literally a basket. Everything in nature has a purpose. Oh yeah. It does. That's really neat. Amazing. Well, thank you guys for spending some time with us. I appreciate it. It's beautiful work. Did you did you think back when you were kids you'd grow up to be pumpkin farmers? Yeah. Sure hoped to. That's <laughs> what it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Dreams come true. When I was a kid, I used to work on a big giant farm up in north uh, northern Missouri, up by Nevada, kind of central Missouri. Uh huh. And uh, we did you know five six hundred acre fields of pumpkins, watermelons, cantaloupes, tomatoes. Uh, we even grew peanuts a couple times, and uh, you know, I, being a little boy, fell in love with the tractors and equipment, and it was like, I couldn't find one big enough, so it's like every year they'd upgrade me to a bigger machine. Oh, that's neat. Well, guys, thank you so much, and remind me again your name? Christina.
Christina and Edgar. Edgar yep. and Jane's Farm. Jane's Farm. We'll have everybody yeah. check you out on Facebook. Thank you and thank you for spending time with us. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Have a wonderful Sunday. I just want everybody to know I weighed 125 when I walked in here. <laughs> That's just, right. <laughs> have a good day, everybody. us out. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, I, this is great. so wonderful. What a great legacy. Everybody here is having a great time. Kathy has spent so much time with us. She's wonderful. She's a great asset. I know I don't need to tell you that, but um, really great place. I'm so glad we made it out to glad see to you today. Glad to Yeah, I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy this nice fall day. And we do. really a uh, beautiful time of year. Kathy has told us so much about what you've done. It's just amazing. Just amazing that it started. And what a dream. It's a lot of fun and, anyway. And, and to make to your dreams all come always, true. Always going to be growing something new and trialing something new. Yeah, she set us up with some great seeds. We're going to try some new all things right. that I've never grown before. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. And uh, really looking forward to it. I you know, appreciate you coming down. and hopefully you have a wonderful trip and enjoy the, the scenery around right now. Yeah, we are. We're having a great time. There's my Christmas catalog. Okay, so this is last year's whole seed catalog. Okay. Uh, the new, the 2023s will be available around the 1st of December. Um, and this is our brand new, this is our free uh, seed catalog. Uh, the difference between the two catalogs and the reason we charge for this one is and that the difference in size is not in the seed offerings. The seed offerings are very identical. Um, but this one has lots more photos, stories, all kinds of information. Recipes. About Recipes, mm. things that, if you look at this one, this is basically just seed offerings. This one has stories about the business, about the seeds, about just all kinds, about charity, all, all kinds of things about the company. It is chock full. So, so this one now, the new one will cost $14.95 and be available in December. This one, anyone who wants a free seed catalog, they can go to our website and sign up for it. Okay. And I'll put that information in the description box Great. for our viewers. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you. I even thank get a thick you're one, welcome. huh? You're welcome. Thank you. Boy, Christmas reading is going to be good. We're back here in front of this beautiful tower of pumpkins and gourds, and we're finishing up our day here with Kathy. She's been so great. She's been taking us around, showing us everything. We've got to meet some really interesting people and see some really incredible things here at Baker Creek Heirloom Seed. And I want to thank you so much for spending time with us. I appreciate it. She's been really great at showing us some love for Round the Hay Bale for our podcast and also setting us up with some seeds for our viewers here on Country Mama Musings. We're going to have a seed giveaway, so thank you so much for doing that for us, Kathy. Not only for the seeds, but being so gracious. What a wonderful hostess taking us around and spending quite a bit of time with us. I really appreciate it. And you are so welcome. I've enjoyed it and getting to know you, and I look forward to seeing the podcast and and just so glad. We are always glad to have visitors here at the farm. So we're glad that you stopped by. Well, thank you so much. And we'll be back. Okay. I think this is definitely a destination for us to come back and spend more time when we're in the area. So if you have the chance to come down around Springfield, Marshfield, Mansfield, I don't know any of the other local communities, but if you're in this area of Missouri, make sure you put it in your itinerary to stop by Baker Creek 
heirloom seed and just really visit this beautiful location and pick up some great heirloom seeds for your garden. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. All right. There's our truck. We're the last one to leave. Poor Papa Jim. He's gone out to the truck to meet me. But we're like the last ones. You can't take me anywhere.